beautiful Selfish Babes, it is your girl Olenike O.C. here, bringing you another Selfish Babe Selfish Talk podcast. And today on the lovely podcast, I have Mary C. who is also known as Miss Skittles, and she likes to name herself the Kris Jenner and Olivia Pope of Marketing. Say hello. Hey, everyone. Hey, Selfish Babes. How are you? Thank you so much, um, Miss Skittles, for being on the podcast. I know that the things that you're about to share is going to help do ne- the next selfish babe who is looking to be a girl boss, or should I say part of the girl mob, okay? Sure. <laughs> so for the selfish babe that doesn't know anything about you, I really want you to kind of let us know your upbringing, your upbringing and like where you came from and like how was your experience growing up? Yes, yeah, so I love to um, pour into girls that are similar to me like that look like me trust me you guys just because you look at someone and you're like oh my god they're extremely successful they're extremely wealthy what you don't know is the journey that it took to get here and so I say this with all humbleness I came from nothing okay like I was born in Indianapolis Indiana I was the girl that didn't have a really good relationship with my mom. Um, I believe that my mom had a lot of um, deep, dark issues that she hadn't faced, and it kind of poured into her children, you know? So I grew up with really um, bad insecurities of, oh, I look like this. Oh, I went to, you know, schools with other people that didn't look like me. So I was always like the black sheep, like, oh, your hair, oh, your text, oh, this, you know, and so I always wanted to talk a certain way, look a certain way, and I think that with my mom getting me into pageants really, really young, I was like six when I got into my first pageant, and it carried me all the way into senior year of high school. Um, Getting into pageants, it can be a great thing, or it can be like terrible thing for a kid yeah so with me with insecurities like I just never felt like I was good enough even though I literally won every pageant except two so yeah. all pageants is up to but it's when I lost or when she thought that I was gonna lose it struck a certain thing inside of my soul you know yeah. and the reason why I'm telling you guys this all the way back from when I was six years old is because for the moms that are listening or for the women that are looking to be moms whatever you are dealing whatever pain you are dealing with as an adult you need to handle that pain before you have children because what we don't realize is that we inflict our child or children with all of this pain yeah. that we didn't heal before we started to have children and I think that that's what my mom did she used to always say you're not cute enough and how I ended up getting into pageants was I'm telling y'all guys so much but <laughs> it's okay I think it'll help I think it'll help it will um, help the reason why my mom got me into pageants is because she moved us from Cleveland, Ohio to Indianapolis, Indiana to chase a guy and if you guys want to know my story it's in this book it's in this book, my whole story. What's the name of your book? What's the name of your book? For those the that icing, the icing on top ain't always sweet. It's in that book. Um, you can check out my full story just so you can really assess where you are in life. And if you think that what you're going through is bad, a ma- like just read my story. Then you will feel like your life is much better. <laughs> um, so going through all of that, she left Cleveland, moved to Indiana to, ch- to chase my older brother's um, father yeah. who had moved on. And her little girl was in pageants. Her little girl was light-skinned, beautiful eyes, beautiful teeth. And so with that, she wanted to compete with that narrative. So in her mind, if I was... I, I, I was a singer, so I was more talented, and she got me fake teeth, so my teeth were straighter, and she did this, and got her fake teeth. This was at six years old. Your teeth? Oh, wow. Yeah, they're called gumbies. They're called gumbies, so it, like, literally six on your teeth. Oh, okay, wow. So it's like fake teeth as okay. a... a <laughs> yeah, like, just look at all the moms do with pageants. But my thing was, we were home, we were, like, one one breath away from being homeless like we were living at my aunt on uh, my great aunt's house um big mama she had roaches you know like like yeah. I, when i when i tell you i came from nothing like came from nothing and i and i it, it really changed the way that my mindset is to this day 
Yeah. Because as I grew up, I took that with me and I took the relationship with me and I took everything that I went through with me and I said, oh, this is not happening for me yeah. as an adult. Like I won't put those inflictions on my children. Yeah. I will be the one that will get help. Um, I think that, you know, being black women or being brown women, we're taught as a young age to be so strong yeah. and to not ask for help yeah. and get it done by all means necessary. Yeah. Not that's that's not me. That's not my story. Like, yeah. an adult, no. If I have a I have a daughter, I'm running six or seven companies. I'm gonna hire a nanny. Yeah. Oh my god. Does it? If it takes me an hour to cook. Yeah. But I also can make a hundred thousand dollars in an hour. I'm yeah. gonna hire a chef. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, as long as my husband and my family and my household is happy. Why do I particularly have to participate in the task? And I also want you guys to um, yeah, because I love that. Like I had went on two trips with Miss Skittles and we'll get into that in a second, but I had on the China trip and I had went on the Thailand trip. And I don't think it was until the Thailand trip where I was having a conversation with Miss Skittles and she told us that she had a nanny. And y'all, for real, like, she was the first black woman I've ever met that literally told me that she had a nanny. And I was like, wow. Like, I just felt so happy because I was like, finally, like, wow, I meet a black woman that has a nanny and is, like, not ashamed of it. Like, she openly talks about it because what she had just said, talking about we're taught to be, like, superwoman and do it all and blah, blah, blah. Imagine if we honestly did it all and if you are currently doing it all are you not exhausted are you not tired would you not like help right and so i think one aspect of that also is leaning more into our feminine energy which i'm also learning to do but asking for help and having team and delegating is a lot to do with feminine energy and so yes. if you're somebody that's like i want to build an empire i want to provide like you're also helping to provide for other families yourself not just yourself and so i really yes. i'm really glad to mention that like I just want the selfish babes to take that in. Like, you can have a nanny. Like, you can have a cook. Like, you don't have to be the one doing it all at all. You don't always have to be the one doing it all. But it's like, how do we get those resources to do that? And um, Miss Skittles will be talking about that very shortly, too. Yes. And I also want you guys to stop putting a price on your lifestyle. I think, you know, from someone that came from nothing, we, we put our money into things that we really, like, do you really need the that whole fashion over outfit. Do you need that Chanel bag? Do you need that this? Because it's what it took to buy that. You could have bought a chef or you could have had someone meal prep for you for the week, which is like $250, $300. And that could have carried your family over instead of going out to eat at the five-star steakhouse, you know? So yeah. to me, I would rather care about my the essence of my being yeah. in my home with my family and our happiness than I care about this or that. And I also care that I'm able to do the things that I love to do at the leisure of when I want to do them. Like we have a living nanny. So to me, it just makes my life easier. And I believe that we as women should get help. Yeah. Because yes. think about your life and, and for the women that I'm not talking to that had an amazing childhood and their parents were happily married and they were in love and everything was like peaches and cream. Yeah. I can look, I shout out to y'all. <laughs> but for the women that didn't, you want to think about that one thing that your mom said to you that made you who you are today. Yeah. Or like my parent, like I remember my mom never paid her bills on time. So Sometimes we didn't have water. Sometimes we didn't have light. Sometimes we didn't have, you know, all of these different things. And it's like, I told myself I will never attribute that trait, which is why now everything is on auto pay for me. My accountant is always like, you girl, you paying stuff early. You paying stuff more than what you need. But I just don't want to ever walk in my house and have lights off. Or I don't ever, you know, you got to start thinking about what happened to you as a child yeah. that made you into the person that you are today and how to not inflict it on your children. So going back to that, I was, um, it, that very scenario made me into the very ambitious, hardworking, dedicated woman that I am today. And it also showed me not to judge other women, but to figure out where, their weaknesses are and where your strengths are and if you guys two got together both of you can be strengthened I was so like, what scenario was it the scenario that your mom was chasing this man that had moved on that scenario 
I think it was the scenario that my mom didn't want help. Uh. And when I was around, um, so eventually like my, uh, we ended up being homeless, homeless, like living in an abandoned restaurant, like wow. completely homeless and moving, getting kicked out that abandoned restaurant. Uh, that's a long story. You guys have to really get the book. Huh? How long did y'all stay there? We stayed there in that abandoned restaurant for about four months. Wow. But the, the thing is, my my mom mandom, randomly met this guy, and he had the keys to the restaurant. So at one point in time in his greater life, it was his restaurant. Yeah. In that it got foreclosed or condemned or whatever. And she was so mental. I think that in situations and scenarios, we can simply tap out. Yeah. And I think that my mom had literally tapped out of life where we were and was really convinced that this man could make our life better. And we were homeless and she worked at Sam's club across the street and we ate breakfast at the hotel. And after that, when my family started to get calls from school and calls from, you know, other places, my aunts, then they stepped in and took me yeah. after we were then not, not only moved from the abandoned restaurant, but then living in a storage unit, you know, like a, a storage unit, like with an extension cord that you had to plug up down the hallway to make a light work. So we went from living there to washing up in the hotel and all of those things I felt like are self-inflicted. Like, ma'am, it is no reason for us to be living like this. Like I have aunts, I got cousins, I got, but as a kid who can tell their parent what is best for them. So in that moment, it taught me and it made me feel like if you only ask someone for help, like we wouldn't have been there. You know, if you've only, yes, my auntie, my aunt ended up taking me in. I ended up being able to go to regular school. I ended up being able to have the uh, birthday party of my dreams. And I'm like, well, did I have a year? Did I have to struggle for a year? And so I think that moms, because we become this superpower and we have to do everything, We don't ask. And there's like literally another woman that's sitting next to you. There is another woman in your circle. There may be another woman on Facebook or on Selfish Base podcast Mm -hmm. that you can simply ask, hey, love, how did you do that? And even if you walk down the road and you ask three girls and they don't tell you, somebody is going to tell you if you keep asking. I was going to say the worst that somebody can say is no. You know, the worst that somebody could say is no, but... That doesn't mean that there isn't an opportunity where one does get help. Now I have something, I have a question because I have a question. That's how I'm going to say it. So like I've seen, and this is just what I've seen in shows, or maybe some people have this where they're like, if only I can get help from this one particular person, they're going to make my dreams come true. And so they bet their life on this one. Like, for example, like kind of like how your mom with the guy, like she, she really thought that he was the one that was going to, help proud of everything. So like, how do we balance asking for help, right? But then also being accountable for our own lives. So I think that one, even if you ask someone for the recipe book, you still have to get in the kitchen to cook it. Yeah. You know, I think that if we start thinking about that in our mind, and also if someone tells me no, I use it as motivation. I don't use it as humiliation. (laughs) <laughs> so a lot of times when people ask someone for no, they're like, oh, let me go hide. I asked her, you know what? I'm like, oh, I asked you and you didn't give it to me. Oh, let me show you this glow ups, ma'am. <laughs> like, you're going to be mad that you didn't give me the little bit of information that I was asking for. Because when I, because I believe in myself so much that I know that this girl, because I have realized in life, their life is a roller coaster. Yeah. And some people that are on the top often see the bottom and then they may go back up to the top. But if while you're at the top, if you're shitting on people or if you are looking down on the people that are on the bottom and you're not helping them come up, when they get to the top, you're on your way back down. Yeah. And a lot so, of people also don't have to keep in their mind the people, quote unquote, on the bottom are helping you step the top. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So you just got to be particular you just gotta be a good person in general yeah right yeah also i think so you have to use it if you ask someone something and they say no use it as motivation not humiliation but also 
come to the table with something. Yes. Everybody has something yes. inside of them. Whether you are the best cook possible, the best chef, you can clean a mean a car, you can do something. You can yeah. do something. You know how to belly dance. You know how to lose weight. You know how to steam a t-shirt. It is something that everybody knows how to do. Yeah. Look on this girl's Instagram page. Man, Skittles don't never iron her clothes. This is me for real. I don't iron at all. <laughs> so if you come to me and you're like, girl, I can crease a mean jean, <laughs> but I don't know how to do marketing. <laughs> we, you know? Like, I think sometimes we often think that our talents are dumb or we don't think that, you know, like somebody knows how to make, I don't know, like a pizza from scratch. I don't know how to make a pizza from scratch. Yeah. So therefore we have even playing field. I know how to do marketing, but oh my God, I've been looking for this Italian pizza yeah. and you know how to make it from scratch. Hey girl, can you teach me marketing when I come over and make this pizza for you? Yeah. Or I show you how to do it? Guess yeah. what? Now you add it to my strengths and I add it to your strength. So figure out what it is about who you're looking at to get information to. What, what are they missing? It is something that they're missing. Oh my God, you don't got a LinkedIn. Oh my God, your description. Skittles, your captions are spelled wrong. I am a spelling bee champ of the world like figure out where you can add to their life and yeah. most of the time it won't be a no I like that I like that and I like you for sharing um the bit that you did just about where you came from and being homeless and I, there's a lot that like schools has been through that y'all don't know I mean I know she said go to go get where can we get the book by the way if you, if you, want you guys to can get it on misskittles.com or amazon the icing on top and you know with the mz so y'all know yes mz <laughs> but she's actually been through a lot and uh it wasn't until I went on her the trips I had mentioned that we, the pe me and the other women that were there that like really heard her story and so that little bit that she just shared with y'all today, I didn't know, but I heard a lot more. So that's what I'm saying. I know she's been through a lot. And so you guys, I have been through a lot in everything. You know, I've been married before. My sister committed suicide. Um, my very best friend, mom, killed her. Um, you know, my very first boyfriend, first love, got shot up in a car on a date that I was supposed to be on. So, like, what I'm telling you and the reason why I'm telling you guys this is not to make you sad or not to make you um, depressed or anything for me. I'm just saying if I can go through all of that and still create a multi-million dollar company, still create managed girls, still create a digital company, safe, like whatever it is that you are doing, you can do it. Yeah. And what I've learned, um, not only what I've learned through law of attraction, manifestation, spiritual development, also through spirit is that yeah, we may be born into certain circumstances, but it is really up to ourselves to change those circumstances. But it's really up for us to understand that we can change our circumstances. So if you don't learn anything, and I know y'all learn a lot, is that you could change your motherfucking circumstances. Okay, Miss Skittles has yeah. changed her circumstances and others, not just her own, but others as well. And yeah. I think that's very, very, very important. And so now like okay so i know you also had a t-shirt company do you still have a t-shirt company like i know you yeah. started like business in that way kind of so like tell us about that your business journey okay okay so my business journey kind of started off in music really um i was an artist again going through all of that with my mom it made me start writing so i started off doing poetry then i ended up being in a talent show and it led me into a music journey i actually won so many talent shows in my city that mm -hmm. i ended up being on tour with Screen tour, yeah, at 15 years old. Okay, little bow wow, and all the beats. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like my first real business, like being on time. Like, you know, I was the first person to open up when there wasn't even nobody in the arena, but I had to be on stage and I had to be dressed. And so, all of those things, you know, where you don't think it makes you into someone, it makes you into somebody. So, the fact that people are like, How you get on makeup every day and you got an 8 a.m. call. Well, it takes me back to when I was the first person opening up on tour. Yeah. And if I, you know, so all of those things matter. So it started off in music. Then I started to hate how the music industry was. Hmm. And so I was like, you know what? I want to get into retail. I want to get into clothing. I want to get into styling. Yeah. So I moved into being a wardrobe styling, a wardrobe stylist, which allowed me to tour with a really, really big Disney artist at the time. Okay. I don't want to say it. <laughs> but I toured with a really big Disney artist. 
And I went on that tour, guys. I literally took the risk of my life. I just graduated from college. I said, I'm going on this tour. My dad said, no, no, you don't have enough money. I was literally dating my first husband at the time, uh, but we were in the dating stages. And I was like, everybody for college, give me money. So <laughs> my family, let me tell y'all what they got together. About $300. They, you know, they put about $300 together. Yeah. I went all the way to Europe with $300. Wow. And wow. $300. I said, the hustler in me, I'm going to make it work. Like, I know how I am. I know that I am so talented that they will see me as an asset and pay me more because this was literally like an internship. It was like a trial run for the job that I wanted. Um, so I literally went there. You guys, I met this artist at Top Shop. I was a head stylist at Top Shop yeah. in New York. Um, so I met this artist at Top Shop. Anyways, I ended up getting in there. 14 days in, into the tour, we started hearing that the tour is going to get canceled, all this crazy stuff, so I'm sad. But every day, for like six days, I was getting an envelope. I'm like, okay. I would just literally grab them, put them on my desk. And my aunt, envelope. who was a, no, just like a white envelope. I never opened it because oh. me and my integrity, integrity is a very big thing for me, so I never opened it. And the publicist, uh, Catherine, who brung me on this tour, yeah. I had a really good relationship with her. So I didn't know she was dealing with so much media stuff, you know, Disney yeah. and Disney artists and all yeah. that stuff. She was dealing with so much. I didn't know if they were just giving it to me and this was my job. So I was just holding them. Yeah. So we ended up getting on the call and I was like, Hey, I have all of these envelopes here. I want to be able to turn them into you. Like I never opened them or anything. This is my first tour. I don't know anything Girl, I learned so much on the tour. This, that's a whole nother interview. Okay. But I learned that celebrity, like, they're, it's, it's real. Like, stunt doubles, real. Yeah. Like, paparazzi, real, real, real. Yeah. So I learned so much. So And she was like, oh, Skittles, no, we added you to the writer. Like, that's your money. Like, the, sure. the tour is paying you. I'm like, what's a writer? She's <laughs> like, well, well the, the talent has a budget. And we add all of the expenses to the budget and you're, you're on the expense sheet. So I'm like, okay. So I'm opening them a $3,500, wow. 3,500 euros wow. every. Wow. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. 1,500 yes. euros. Yes. Which at that time turned into like, I don't know, was at the time $2,000 or something like that. Yes. Cause our money was more. So I ended up le getting $2,000 a day on a 15-day tour. Wow. So I came home, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, wow. Dad, pick me up from the airport. Like, I need a Range Rover. Like, I'm asking him for all this stuff. He's like, look, you need to start a business. Like, start thinking about what it is you want to do. And so from that point on, I partnered with a guy who owned a clothing store that was about to close. Yeah. So we went 50, 50 in on this clothing store. And from there, that's when my entrepreneurship journey started. I kind of had the backing to know like, okay, I'm going to get money regardless with this clothing store. But I also knew that it wasn't fully mine. Yeah. You know, when I wanted to put things into place, I had to go to him and then he has approved and yeah. I wanted to do this. And so I was like, man, I want something that's completely mine. And we were selling a t-shirt brand in that store and the t-shirt brand just stopped making the brand. And so I was asking the owner, I was like, Hey, like we need these shirts. Like our store is, you know, doing so well with your shirts. And my friend was like, well, why don't you make your own shirts? I was like, no, like, okay. I don't make shirts. They were like, well, if you know that your girl audience, it's not hard to start a t-shirt line. It was yeah. like, it's very easy. And so he literally was like, if you don't believe in you, I'm going to believe in you. I'm going to put a, the, the first order was only $300, okay. but I was so scared about this idea and this venture that I wasn't willing to risk $300. And a lot of times we'd be scared. We're yeah. like, yes. it's only $300. You can have 30,000 in your bank account, but $300, you're like, well, I really could go spend it at Target, you know, like. Instead of investing in something that you can grow, that you can grow, it's going to make you way more money. Yes, but we 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 are so scared yeah. of our initial investment. So yeah. he gave me one hundred and fifty dollars. I literally gave it back to him a week later when we were almost sold out of our first wow. batch of shirts. Wow. So, you know, that is how Cupcake Mafia started. I left that store. I I completely put my whole 
heart into Cupcake Mafia. I moved to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, within one year, I moved to Atlanta with literally no money on somebody's sublease. Yeah. Um, living kind of crazy. But I prayed every single night. That year, I moved in like August and I had my best sales break, which was that Black Friday. Yeah. Um, and then I started working with a lot of other celebrities to do wardrobe styling and I fully took Cupcake Mafia on like this is it. Yeah. And in four years we did two point four million dollars. Wow. Amazing. From a three hundred dollar investment to two point four million dollars. Then I wanted to take my company public. Yeah. And I signed with investors. Yeah. And I was so big on being overwhelmed with my overall company that I ended up losing my company. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's so many different details that you need to look at when you're looking at the contract, but I really only seen dollar signs and and stress. So I was kind of like, these dollar signs is looking way better than this stress over here. You know? (laughs) So I I signed into a very bad deal and I ended up losing my business, but Mm -hmm. I believe that God was only, um, putting them in the way to teach me. Yeah. And it allowed and God was like, okay, I'm, you good. You you done learned a lot in these six months. Okay, cool. I'm going to let you fall back down, get a little bit more humble, create a company called Girl Mob, support into other females, create the icing agency, and show everything that you've done so far for your brand and build your business to a multi-million dollar brand to help others. Yeah. On that time in the air bed that I, I lost my company and left my penthouse in New York, Airbnb it and left and moved to an airbed above my store in Buckhead in Atlanta. And from the airbed for six months, I built other female businesses. I started a company called the Icing Agency, which is literally a branding and marketing company to pour into other females and help them grow their businesses. I have a question. So what made you go like think about I think I wanna market? other women's business or help them build their businesses? Like what came into your mind? Like what triggered that? Yeah. So it was literally a conversation that I had with my, one of my best friends to yeah. this day, Alex Wolf. Yeah. Um, oh, one of, Alex. <laughs> yeah. So one of, um, a conversation that I had with my best friend and we both were growing her business, you know, that she grew in and sold it. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we were both at the starter stages when we started becoming friends. We met on Instagram. Yeah. Like everybody kept saying, Oh, you got her quotes on your shirts and she got your sh- your quote is on her shirt, it's on her quote. And it's like, well, we really just think the same. It yeah. wasn't either one stealing from either. Yeah. Um, so we ended up becoming best friends. And that's how that's why you have to have amazing women in your circle. Yeah. That's yeah. why you have to have people that you can rely on. Because when I got fired from my business, even though I have two amazing best friends that was like literally like, okay, where we pull up at? Yeah. But it wasn't about pulling up, it was more yeah. about the mindset change that I needed at that time because I felt defeated and I felt like this is it for me. Like I built a multi-million dollar brand. Oh my God. All I got is $18,000 in my account. When I signed with them, I had almost $80,000. What do I do? It's $10,000 to walk in my lawyer's office. And I had a conversation with Alex and I was like, man, I was like, it's over. Like I'm starting a new clothing brand. And hopefully if I don't get the trademark back, I'll just, move my audience into this brand and I'll let people know what's going on and what happened. She was like, Skittles, if you built a multi-million dollar brand, build another one, build a couple more and show girls how you've done it. I'm like, well, what do you mean show girls? She was like, didn't you have issues with designers building your brand? Didn't you have issues with finding the right photographer? Didn't you have issues finding the right team? I say, yeah, don't you have a great team? Yeah. Aren't they still on payroll? Yes. <laughs> Show other women how to build their brand using your team because yeah. other women are in the same situation dealing with graphic designers that don't come through, dealing with photographers that don't give the pictures or only give you six pictures from 500 yeah. uh, <laughs> shot photo shoot, you know? So yeah. and that's what it, it literally a light bulb popped on in my head because before that I was always the girl that was like, Oh my God, I don't even have time to build nobody else up. I don't have time for mentoring. I don't have time to pour into other people because I was so overwhelmed and consumed with what I was already building. But God will take you to a place of humbleness where he will say, well, this is what I wanted you to do from the first place. I I only allowed you to build a multi-million dollar business so you could show others. Yeah. 
And also, I believe that in that time frame of what I went through, it allowed me to understand how to handle 150 employees. When I was working with that company, we had 150 employees. Wow. I can come out with a collection tomorrow. I needed to pre-plan for fall, pre-plan for um for winter because it was coming from China. I learned how to communicate with the factory in China. Yeah. I learned what tech packs were, what specs were, what SKUs were, what shipping routing guides were. I learned all of that stuff in that six months yeah. so that when God said, okay, you're good. Yeah, I'm going to get you to the lowest point possible so you can hear me. Yeah. Because I was talking to you in the penthouse, but I think you was too high up <laughs> to hear what the the the, the that plan funny. that I had for your life. Yeah. Let me put you on the air bed, literally the lowest thing to the ground. Okay, can you hear me now, Miss Skittles? Okay. <laughs> can funny. you hear me now? So he put me on the air bed. And, and my vision was so clear. Like, <laughs> my hearing was so was so open. And he kept saying, you got to go to China. Stop trying. Stop looking for another company to save you. Stop looking for another company to partner with. You've seen how it went with this one. Why can't it be you? Yeah. Why can't you own a factory in China? If you trusted these guys to give them 30000 to open a factory in China, why can't you triple the investment and go out there and figure it out for yourself. Is it scary? Yes. Could you take a loss? Yes. But you already took a loss. Yeah. So why can't you believe in you enough to do it yourself? Yeah. And in that time frame, that six months of being on the airbed, not only did I go to China, open up my own factory in China. Yeah. Not only did I open up three retail stores in another franchise. Not only did I start managing B Simone, yes. all of that from an airbed. You get me? So yes. like, I, I believe that God will take you to the lowest times want to move people out the way, right? One of the reasons why I got fired from my company is because I didn't want to sell to City Trends. Wow. Like I didn't want to sell my cupcake mafia brand yeah. to city trends because I believe that it should be in even markets and I believe it should yeah. be in Bloomingdale's and I believe that it should be in all of these higher end yeah. retailers. Not that I didn't have a brand for city trends. I had a brand for city trends and they didn't want to use the brand that I wanted to create for city trends. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was like a million dollar deal that I would have been splitting with all of these different go different people. Yeah. You guys, when I tell you, after the moment that I got my trademark back, I purchased my trademark back from them. I purchased my business back from them. The moment that I got it back, one of the great good guys in the office, like it was one guy that was on the investment firm uh, board. Yeah. And he was like, literally, I'm like, why are you here? Like, you're literally... An angel working with the devil. <laughs> but he was literally so nice. His spirit was so nice. He called me. He literally left out the office and called me. He's like, hey, I heard that you just got your trademark back. I said, yeah. He's like, I have something that's really huge for you. I wish you the best of luck, y'all. Y'all gonna make me uh, email him right now and just thank <laughs> him for this moment. He's like, I wanted to uh, say you are so strong. No one has ever fought our company. No one has ever got their brand back. Wow. We've been multi-million dollar companies. We fired the owners and no one has ever been able to do what you've done. I'm so proud of you. And for this, I have an email that is about to be sent to you. You guys, when he hung up that phone, City Trends emailed me and said, not only do I want to sign a multi-million dollar deal with you for a brand that you can create, you can name it whatever you want to name it, you can do whatever you want to do with it, but I also want to hire you as a consultant for our company. So wow. God will move everyone out the way. Wow. He, he got a blessing with your name on it. Yeah. He, got, he got it with your name on it. He's just waiting for the the bad people that's around you, he don't want to get them the blessing. <laughs> so he might take you because I think that when we're shining, when we're in the limo, when we're on the private jets, when we're on the planes, everybody want to come. Who don't want to get in the limo? Who don't want to get on the jet? But what about when you're on the airbed? What about when you're on the, in the darkest moments of your life, yeah. you need to look at those people. Those people are, should be invited to the jet. Yeah. Those people should be invited to 
the luxuries of life, you know? And so it really revealed who was with me when I was on that airbed and they ended up being blessed in my new journey. That's such a wonderful, wonderful journey. The, the highs and the lows when you was like, God was like, I don't, I don't think she hear me in this penthouse, man. We gotta, we gotta humble her a bit. Can you hear me now? But then gave you another blessing, right? Gave you another yeah. blessing. And the fact that that guy that, that, um, talked to that you talked to on the phone, he was like, you know, nobody's ever fought our company. Nobody's gotten their, their company back. And the fact that he mentioned, he said, they all, it seems like they always fire the owners. Like that's Oh yeah, they do. They do. The thing. But the people going into that contract don't know that. And so no. they don't know that. And I so, knew that three months in to working there when I seen that a, a owner that their brand had made them a hundred million dollars. Yeah. My brand only made two. Yeah. So and I was the third highest paid on the company. So wow. they fired him. They fired the second highest paid owner. So I kind of knew like what well, I'm next, but I don't think it's going to be so soon yeah. because they just signed me six months ago. They haven't even given my brand a chance. Yeah. So I didn't think it was so soon, but I kind of already knew. Wow. Amazing, amazing uh, story, amazing journey. And now for the Selfish Babes, I'm like, oh my God, like I heard this much. I want to work with Miss Skittles and I want to work with the icing agency. Like where can they find your information on that? Yes, you can definitely find us on Instagram, The Icing Agency, and our website is theicingagency.co, um, and you can DM me, Miss Skittles, M-Z-S-K-I-T-T-L-E-Z, oh my God, it's my rap name, guys. <laughs> and I have stuck with me. Below. I have her information below, but now you had mentioned, but you are currently, but you also mentioned in your story that you became uh, B. Simone's manager, and can you give us just a little snippet of that story? Because Honestly, you helped her grow a lot. And when I say not not in terms of numbers, I'm talking about financially. And that's such yes. a lesson. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, when I met Beat Simone, so I was rebuilding Cupcake Mafia at the phase. I was literally still on the airbed. So I literally came out of my airbed office, I mean, a room, yeah. into our photo studio because we were in one office, okay? Yeah. So I was literally sleeping in my office, but it was like tucked off room. So no one knew that. Not even my staff knew that. But um, when she arrived, her spirit was so great. I'm like, oh, my God, this girl is cool. And my interns, I had interns at the time that put me on to her. They were like, oh, she's so funny. She got a video that's out right now talking about fuckboys. It would be great because you had a shirt that said, say no to fuckboys at the time. We should get her to do a shoot. So at the time, I was like, hey, just ask her how much it costs. It was like $300 or something. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's pay her whatever. So when, after the shoot was over, she was like, I was like, yeah, so give me your manager's information. I'll send you the link to the photos. And then I'll send you also our agreement, blah, blah, blah. blah. Do you want to have a, your lawyer look over? She was like, no, like, I don't have no manager. I don't have no team. And she was like, you managing me. I was like, no, 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 no. (laughs) Like, girl, I can barely manage these finances. Okay. Like, (laughs) yeah, I told her, I was like, listen, I will help you get you because I didn't also want to manage a starving artist Yeah. because I didn't feel like financially, I just opened up a factory in China, girl, I got three retail stores, honey, like I got, I'm building my brand back up. I got a city trip. Like I'm using the money from this to put into all of these things. I definitely can't be funding no music artists, you know? Yeah. So, um, I let her know, like, I can help you, like, whatever you need. If you got an endorsement deal, you want to run it by me because I'm very versed in the area, like, I can help you. So I helped her for about a year, and she helps me also. When it comes to, that's why it's so important to come to the table with something. She had an artistry. She had an influence. My brand needed that artistry and needed that influence. So anytime I needed her for a photo shoot for Cupcake Mafia, she showed up. Yeah. She didn't want to sell merch anymore. She was tired of shipping it herself. Yeah. So she said, I'll take all my quotes. You can make all the merch. I'll promote it. You can make all the sales from it. And whatever sales you make, even though when I was like, hey, boo, do you want this? Do you want that? She was like, oh, it's nothing. No, because I was building her brand up here. I was building endorsement deals yeah. and long-term opportunities yeah. like wilding out and and getting her ready, not saying that I got that deal for her, but yeah. getting her ready for her to walk into that level of life. Sure. So 
with that being said, I helped her for about a year and then I got pregnant. And I was like, okay, this has to go in black and white. Like, before I even tell her that I'm pregnant, I told her, I was like, hey, like, I need you to sign this contract. Like, do you really want me to be your manager? Because, like, my life is getting a little bit serious now, and I need to know that we're a thing for real. And so, like, she signed it. She was like, yeah, we're going to the top. And so I'm like, okay. I'm going to hold this because after what I tell you, like you may want to tear it up or you may want to keep it going. Yeah. So I literally, I like told her I was pregnant. She started crying. She's like, you're going to forget about me. And literally three months after having my baby, we was on a jet to her show. So mm-hmm. it made me hungrier. It made me hustle harder. Like my daughter's been on 400 flights and half of them are being on tour. So um, it, I think that relationship, we both, played a huge role in the success of both of us yeah you know um b was is fairly an easy client to work with because she listens to me she knows i am not going to steer her down the wrong path but also we have to keep in mind that things grow really quickly and sometimes when things are growing you're not you, you, you can, okay, it's just like if you're learning how to swim, right? You learn how to swim, then a little wave come. You're like, whoa, okay, that was a little wave. <laughs> but then a whole bunch of waves come in, like, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what happened with during COVID. Like, wow. during COVID, we thought that, oh, man, our businesses are over. My store was shut down for three months. Honestly, we grew so fast we literally went from a team of like nine people i have 23 employees on payroll every week like oh my god in 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 literally b went from having three employees to 14 employees wow during one month so of course with getting over that wave you can either learn how to swim faster or you could get swamped away and i think that with everything that what we experienced with COVID, we kind of got swamped away. We still had goals and things that we were focusing on. But as a manager, I'm focusing on, oh my God, Martin Lawrence tour got canceled. That was uh, this much amount of money. Now we have these deposits that have to go back. Okay, where are we making that up in her finances? Okay, these these uh, promoters booked her for clubs and they want their money back because they don't know when their club's going to be back open. Okay, this uh, beauty line, we got product on hold in China. We got here. So little details that you rely on team for or you outsource, and this is just in business, sometimes they can, your team can drop the ball and you got to take the fall for it because you grew too fast. Yeah. That's just like, Starbucks or any of these other companies where you hiring people and you don't know they racist and so they're on a video yeah. and Karen on a video and they, she's talking about oh Starbucks don't like black people but then that's that's you just needed help you just needed people so you're not trying to go through all the background I mean, all that stuff of course but it's just like no you just need the hands right now and even when it comes to people being overly qualified because like what we do we have an hr department we know okay great oh wow this is what they say they do they say they make this type of product they say they make this you're thinking from this particular vendor you're going to get this quality of work yeah because this is what they show i'm sure alanike you've ordered stuff from a vendor that looks so great the reviews are so high but when your customer got it, they're like, wait, what? <laughs> and then yeah. you now have to pull down everything yeah. to say. But the fact that you ordered so many at one time, that's not, that's difficult sometimes. It's just like, you order, at least for me, like I order in large bulk some, so I'm not ordering a few pieces, maybe in the beginning just to check some things. But then if I'm ordering a large stuff and it goes to the warehouse and that's already shipped, it's already shipped. And so if the customer is like, what's this? I'm going to be like, damn, what am I going to do with all these other pieces that I have in the warehouse? I totally understand that. So, yes. So in that regard, it's like when you are a entrepreneur, and B has only been an entrepreneur less than a year. Let's yeah. be real with that. Yeah, but very successful. Very, very successful. Extremely successful entrepreneur, but only one year. Yeah. And E, I've been only managing her 
four about to be four years so we have still have a long road ahead of us when it comes to things that we've learned yeah. i've learned a lot as a manager like as a manager you literally are everything the the, the therapist the psychiatrist the accountant the manager the publicist i literally learned everything because what i realized is a client that you're attached to can literally tear down the whole integrity of everything just yeah. by the words that they speak yeah. So I had to have statements and conversations with her as a client and as a friend yeah. about being more inclusive in the statements that you make. But B, you've been around her. Yeah. So you know that she doesn't really believe that she's a celebrity. Like this girl literally goes to the airport and like, <laughs> like she doesn't think that she's yeah. like, oh, I'm at Chipotle. I'm here. Like she doesn't think that she's a celebrity. So the targets that this let us know what it really is in that people care. Yeah. And so, you know, we have to one start to hold the people that we hire more accountable. Yeah. And do a little bit of more fact checking. Yeah. And due diligence prior to releasing something, you know? Yeah. So in, in that regard, like because you're in a really big space now. I know you have a you have more like girl, like there's no limit. There's honestly no limit. But being where you are now, like, what is the biggest mistake you've made and that you want to help other people not make? Uh, so I, I, it would be two. The one would be s delegating, but oversee. Okay. Sometimes I, in several situations, I'm so big on you. If you are a photographer, you know how to do photography i don't yeah so i'm gonna hire you to shoot this project give me the link but if my client comes back and was like well the lighting was bad or there was a glare or you didn't see this in the background i should have overseen the project wow. to make sure that there was no complaints based upon this the standard of work that i deliver yeah yeah so that would be one of the biggest mistakes not only myself any entrepreneur yeah. can make yeah just to trust your brand in the hands of someone else without properly overseeing every single questioning them you know yeah. until you know that that team member is airtight yeah. like i still question my assistant i still question those i still question my team <laughs> and you know based upon working with us olenika you know my team is great yeah but I still question them like, okay, wait, hold up. Let me double check this. Let me double check that, you know? So I still question them. So I think the biggest mistake that you can make is simply delegating it and thinking, okay, yeah, I told her to put it on the website. Oh, it's up. But then you get a hundred orders with nobody charged shipping. What? <laughs> Or then an email blast is sent out with everybody in the BCC. And it's like, you and said you did email marketing. Wait, what? You have to double check. So you have to double check. And then also you need three key players. Okay. If you want to be a powerhouse, you need three key players. Okay. The first key player is an accountant. Yeah. You absolutely, you cannot be doing your books yourself, guys. Girls, I'm taxes sorry. is a thing. Okay, paying taxes is a thing. So I totally agree with that. <laughs> Child, okay, an accountant. You need her in your corner. Her, him, them, whatever. It is so many small business accountants that you can use. I will give one K the accountant on Instagram. She's great. She's a small business accountant. Um, you need one. Yes. Two would be a lawyer. Y'all, listen, I was fired from my own company for one line. Let me tell you what that one line said. I read every detail in the contract. They actually hired a lawyer for me. Don't ever do that. But they hired a lawyer for me. But I felt like, well, they really can't. That lawyer can't work for both teams. Like, he got to be on my side because he could lose his license. Mm -hmm. People don't be caring about that. Wow. They don't care. They they work for whoever paying them at yeah. the end of the day. So I thought this lawyer was black and was like me, and I kind of let him tell me whatever. But this line in the contract said, you are a B member and at any point in time can be voted off by 
the A board. Wow. That line in the contract is what literally caused me to lose my entire business and not be able to use, I couldn't put Cupcake Mafia on anything. Wow. I couldn't open up a store with Cupcake Mafia. I couldn't use Cupcake Mafia for nothing. Wow. Your trademark, your name, the thing that uh, I couldn't use Cupcake Mafia, my intellectual property for that's, anything. That's imagine birthing something and then being able you can't use it on shit. That's crazy. That's like you having a son. Yeah. And someone just come into your house say, Oh, we're gonna be we're gonna be a family and kick you out the house and you can't use your son's name. Wow. So that little line is what got me fired. So you need a lawyer on your team, okay? And the third thing of it all, you need a publicist after after you built your brand, okay? Do not prematurely hire a publicist. I want to give disclaimers because y'all are about to say, oh, it's going to tell me to hire a publicist. No. You need to build your brand up yeah. You need to focus on your brand's voice. What I have right now, do people really want to cover it? Yeah. It's just like, oh my God, I got my logo. Let me hire a publicist. Do you <laughs> think <ready>. for, yeah, <laughs> Forbes is not interested in covering you getting a logo? Yeah. What did you really accomplish? What have you really what has your journey really been about yeah. that could save another reader's life? Yeah. That is when you need a publicist, right? Yeah. Not, you need a brand manager first or simply you need to build a great brand. Yeah. And then hire a publicist. But those are the three people you need on your team if you're wanting to become a powerhouse. I love that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gillis, for that. Um, that count piece. That's I learned that lesson the hard way with that account. Okay, oh, so much tax money paid to shit off, but I have good books now, okay? <laughs> but um, I want to know, I know, so what is the bakery? Tell us about the bakery. Oh, my goodness. I'm super excited about the bakery. So what, oh, my God, you guys. Like, I literally get speeches talking about it because, first of all, let's start where it began. I created Girl Mob. Girl Mob is a digital platform created to provide young female entrepreneurs with the opportunity to connect with other girl bosses and grow their brand, okay? So it's a digital space where we travel together. And what I realized was I really never have a, I don't have a space where I can meet my girl, my members. We yeah. meet on trips. We meet at, you know, experiences and masterminds. But what about being able to monitor them on a day to day. What about finding a space where we had accountability partners yeah. and we can meet up two times a week to be like, girl, did you finish your website? Girl, yeah. did you finish your logo? So that's what the bakery is. It's a beautiful, all pink co working space with four private offices that other females that feel like, okay, I'm bigger than the co working vibe and I need my own space or me and my little, um, you know, small team yeah. to be in there. And so that's what the bakery is. Me and B Simone came together to basically turn Girl Mob into an actual location where people can come in and have memberships. You can rent it out, you can do events there. And also in, in, um, in the space, it's a 14,000 square foot space. We have a retail store. So anyone that's looking to launch a brand, we're going to have a shelf where you, that we can have spotlight brands of the month. And so therefore, if you have a brand, you can be in our retail store, which is going to be getting a lot of traffic. And then we also have our offices there. We have a photo uh, studio with, with, uh, drive-in bay doors. So if you want to say, oh, I want to shoot a video, you can drive your Lamborghini in and shoot your video. Um, so it's it's going to be amazing. It's just like the ultimate space for girls to link up and take their sales and their businesses to the next level. I love that. And when is it open or has it opened already? <laughs> Jesus, y'all. Build-outs, build-outs take <laughs> <laughs> so long and dealing with the city and all of that stuff is so long. But we're looking, I'm going to say December. Okay. I don't want to, we, we thought August. Yeah. 
and we put a lot of money into a build out and had to take it down. So we're going to say December. Okay. Well, I'm super excited to um, hear about the opportunity. I know that that place is going to be a wonderful place for women to come, to network, to bond, to be able to have the opportunity to put their physical products and see how people are reacting to it. Do they need to make changes? And if so, they're able to get feedback from people, what changes, and then come up with a better product. So yes. I think that's beautiful and you have mentioned the girl mob which i know we didn't really get into but i know some of my beautiful selfish babes want to be bosses because you mentioned in the beginning like how can i have the lifestyle of having a nanny and a chef and these private jets and i want this lifestyle and for me i know having a business has made a made a way for me like it has boosted my lifestyle to where I can work at any point of the day on my laptop and if I wanted to go to Tulum today I could so how like what is girl mob and how can women join to be able to boost their lifestyle so girl mob is a digital platform basically we put classes um uh e-courses e-books we're giving you the formula like, you can literally go into our portal, which is really yeah. cool, by the way. It's super cool. Like, you can find members near you. So say if you're like, man, I'm okay, my business is doing well, but my health is not. And yeah. I need someone to hold me accountable to that. You can actually go into our portal and find members near you and be like, hey, girl, I see that you're in the fit group and you're in Atlanta. Can we meet up to work out? Yeah. So our portal is so amazing. Not only can you enrich your mind and grow your mind, but you can also grow with your connections and relationships. And you can also grow with just in our platform in general. And not only to mention like our trips yeah. allow you to live the lifestyle that you never could have lived <laughs> by yourself. You know, exactly. the mentions that we rent out, like I don't think that we could – typically afford them on just like a besties trip yeah. but as a group of like-minded women we could come together um uh, it's going to saloon in yeah. august we'll be on a jet yeah. our first girl mob jet experience that's huge y'all because when i looked at skills and i said okay so she's on a she bought a jet wow that's amazing i'm like i don't think i've heard of anybody's trip anybody's trip where they have a jet, where they're flying a jet. And Miss Skittles is providing women with that opportunity. Like she says, having the lifestyle that you may, wouldn't have right now, you're growing into that lifestyle, but you may not have it right now. But now Miss Skittles is curating this whole experience for you, right? Yes. I think that's so bomb. So, yes. so, so, so bomb. And I want to tell my- up for Girl Mob, because it's only $49.99 a month. So Ooh. you can't really beat that. So how do we find that? Like, what website? What's the website? Girl Mob, G U R L M O B B dot com. And the reason we call it Girl Mob with the U is because it's about girls, but it's about you, <laughs> not me, not we. It's the destiny child of coaching, but you to Beyonce. I love that. I love that. And um, there's something I was going to mention. Oh, I had met Miss Gidules the first time on my trip with her to China. I really wanted to go and check out some vendors and it opened my eyes to different business opportunities that maybe I wasn't looking at before. So whenever, if there's ever another China trip, okay, yes. too, okay, just making sure y'all know. That's a, that's a really, really good trip. Yes, that's where we first got started with our trips to, to China. I was going, I've been to China almost like on our group trip, I think like 16 times. Yeah. Um, but I also started to realize like people love China, but you know, on my trip, it's hustle and bustle. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be walking, you're going to be talking you'll be like how many pieces you mean you've been doing a lot when it comes to china but that but that was such a, a wonderful i think experience of how it is in in the in the industries of e-commerce even going being able to go to the the makeup the makeup factory and seeing how the makeup was made you're like wow like i think as a person that's just maybe starting in their business they're like wow i don't necessarily have to do this like i can start my thing from scratch i can work with a vendor from scratch and make my own brand and see it come to life. And for some people, they may need that experience as a trip, even your other trips around, surrounded with other like-minded women because sometimes you come from spaces where the people around you may not be interested in starting a business, but you know you're interested in starting a business. And so to be able to go on one of Miss Skittles' trips and know that other women, especially being in her girl model group, they're business-oriented. And usually when you find that women are business-oriented, there's a change in mindset. There's a level up in mindset. There's a level up in, in um, lifestyle. And there's a yeah. level up within your circle. 
And I think that's very important as one. I know that's part of the, one of the major reasons why Girl Mob was started. And I know yeah. Littles is working on that Girl Mob Elite. Okay, you're yes. going to Girl Mob Elite. Okay. <laughs> Yes, if you're listening and you got it all together, you got your business together, you have already reached six figures and you want to create strategic investments or partnerships, I'm creating Girl Mob Elite. It's not all the way there yet, so DM me if interested, but it's going to be a platform with girls that have already made the money. Like, we got money sitting in our bank account that could be used for an investment of something that we never thought of. If we bought a commercial building and we all split it and rented it out for yeah. different businesses, like, no, we don't have to physically run it. It's yeah. not going to take away from our everyday life and us running our individual businesses, but it's just creating legacy, you know? So I love it. I love, um, your, the journey that you share with us, Miss Skittle, the things that you're working on, the things that you have built out to help other women and entrepreneurs, I think they're extremely beautiful. I think that the Selfish Babes that are either watching our YouTube channel or are listening on the Selfish Babes Selfish Talk podcast, please check out Miss Skittles. Please go on her website, order one of her webinars, her eBooks, her vendors list. I mean, literally anything you need to start your business, she has available for you. But it starts with um, your belief and it also starts with you being able to take that investment. Like she said in the, in, in the podcast, she had mentioned being scared of a $300 investment that made her $2.4 million, right? Take that in, remember that. Take that in, that sentence in. So whatever investment it is that you are willing to make for yourself, just know that it will grow. Just yes. know that it will grow. Is there anything else you want to leave us with, Miss Skittles? Okay, just really quickly, get in the room. Get in the room. I hate the, the environment that we're in about, like, girl bosses not wanting to learn from other girl bosses and the scam thing and all of this other yeah. stuff. Get into the room. What you do in that room matters. Yeah. Who you connect with in that room matters. You guys, when I lost my business and I got it back, everyone told me, don't do trade shows. You're going to lose so much money, right? I was like, no, I need to do it anyways because I need to get in the room with buyers. I need to get into the room with retailers. I need to let my other brands that I used to work with or used to see at the trade shows know that I'm back. Yeah. And guess what? Even though I didn't make my money that day at that particular trade show, I met with someone. He was like, oh my God, yes. Uh, I, I'm now working at this company. I want to work with you, right? Yeah. And guess what? Three years later, you guys, three years later, this week, which was Monday of this week, I just signed a six-figure deal with that gentleman that was in that room. So wow. get in the room. Stop saying, oh, I don't want to go to women empowerment brunches. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. You don't want to do it because you are hearing what other people took from it. Yeah. You guys got to start to think about, don't think about nobody else's journey. Think about your own, right? Yeah. There are millions of artists signed to Rock Nation, and then there's Beyonce, and then there's Rihanna, <laughs> and then there's, so whatever you do with that platform, whatever you do with that room, there's millions of people on Instagram, and then there's Kylie, and there's people that have great influence. Yeah. You have to use the resources, the connections in the room to take your business to the next level. Yeah. It's not just about getting the recipe book, but it's actually getting in the kitchen to stir up your recipe for success. Yeah. That's the first thing. The second thing that I would tell you is don't believe everything online. Yeah. Don't believe everything online. I know some of you guys may be saying, oh, I think I've seen her on a TV show. Oh, what is that about? It's acting. It's, I was a paid guest on that show. Yeah. I was with my friend that is still my very good friend on the show. So don't look at every single thing that you see on social media and on TV or whatever as being completely real, completely authentic. Yeah. Because there are really situations, <laughs> it, it, it's stuff that's going on that is much bigger in the world than what you see. And they're only giving you a snippet. Yeah. or only a caption or only this person's perspective yeah. of the whole entire story. Yeah. So yeah. make sure before you invest your money into something or sign up for something or buy something that you do your whole yeah. re research, you do fact checking, you look at the reviews, you look at other people attached to this person's success. Yeah. You 
take the classes for yourself. You do all of that before you judge what you quote unquote heard or what you quote unquote seen. Because when you grow your business and you become successful, there will be the same people that will judge you based upon something that they've never done. Yeah. Oh, she made, she did. Oh, she wrote a book. Uh, have you wrote a book? Have you started a business? Because I guarantee you the people that are focused on growing, starting and building their businesses are not the ones creating fake pages, are not the ones hating on other girls because we ourselves know what it's like. Yeah, very true. Very true. That's really all of my <laughs> advice, you guys. Alanike, thank you so much for having me on here talking to oh, your selfish you. babes. I absolutely love what you're doing. I love your podcast. And thank you for spending the time with me. No problem. Thank you for being on, Boo.